are going to be able to stand out. But this is it, guys. This is the first series, the big series of our 2-0 bracket between Indonesia versus Philippines. It is going to be our RQ Hoshi versus Fnatic Onyx. This is going to be a game to keep an eye on, ladies and gentlemen. As we know, they're the global series right around the corner. So establishing dominance here in the Snapdragon stage is going to set up that momentum you need for the rest of the year. And I think the, the drafts that we have here exactly suit the styles that Indonesia and Philippines are known for. With this side of Indonesia wanting to go for a little bit more of that early game and maybe set things up while Fnatic Onyx, we know that they want to be able to take control of that mid game and just slowly tighten the grip around their opponents. Agree, definitely. All right, so far, so smooth. A great cover coming in. I mean, we do see invasion coming in between Susujin as well as Kyla. Kyla are gonna be in the pick right now. Oh, almost close enough to be tagged out, but with a dash, he still managed to survive it out. And we do see at least Brusco is on the like side. Whatever it is, he'll be able to be backed up. But that was a really too close to tell whether or not RQ how she was able to be taken down our one Kelra. But nevertheless, he'll still be able to hold the ground and he had to back away to recall himself. Uh, so, so Jin, it's expected that he's going to be putting a little bit more attention towards the gold lane here. But in the mid lane, Brusco taking quite a lot of damage himself. Oh, coming in and now we do see the first fight coming in by Curry, taking down Durin first. The attempts coming in from Durin to try to shut down. Fnatic Onyx is not going to be able to do so now. e -Dog and Vince going to wait it out for Susujin to be actually hold it out. But this turtle is already in the hands of Kiko. And now they're going to push in for the scream style. Kiko takes out e -Dog immediately with the Spear of Alpha. Now pushing straight away to the side of the one and only Susujin, but doesn't manage to put it. But that was already a good win with one kill on the side as well as the turtle to be taken into to Fnatic Onyx. It is very much expected that Fnatic Onyx should control the early game with an Alpha, Edith, and Gatot Kacha. It's a lot easier for them to take control of objectives, and they just have generally more damage compared to our RQ Hoshi. For RQ, they gotta hold the early game and focus on giving as much farm to Rins and Skylar as possible, with the Claude being the more obvious. That's why you're going to see a little bit more ganking towards the gold lane to make sure that Claude wins out against the Hari, because usually, Harif is the winner here in this 1v1 lane matchup. Oh, that's totally agree. And here on out, we do see a 1v1 matchup coming in from Kurt as well as Durin. Airborne comes through, and now Kurt's trying to do it damage as much as he could. But, I mean, you're talking about fighting off with Durin. I mean, a lot of the mobility-wise, survival and sustainability coming in from him. It's not going to be easy. Attempts coming in from the side of uh, Kurt himself, but he's still not giving up. But he's got to be careful along the side of our RQ. It's going to be Susujin is just overlooking. And it seems that King Kong gets the input as well and they will deny it as well now rinse moving away as quickly as possible before being tagged out at least a reposition is a good in favor coming in from our Kyoshi, but they really gotta hold off for a while because the aggression didn't put out by a fanatic awning at the moment right now it's really scary yeah, I feel a little bit bad for Tyron because when you are on a hill that you're usually the one causing havoc and pressure on the map. But because Onyx just has so much early game damage and they're dealing with an alpha jungle, the Hilda cannot actually invade to try and disrupt King Kong. He just has to try and win out a lane priority, which is already kind of difficult against an Edith, so that they can roam and actually stop Onyx from being overly aggressive on other parts of the map. Unfortunately, Onyx not really being stopped by that. They're going to start contesting the turtle in Sutsujin. Oh, coming in straight with the Spear of Alpha, pushing in straight. Ebon comes through, Darren trying to push it straight away to King Kong, but doesn't manage to get the kill he's needed. He don't getting a lot of damage, but the turtle has already been picked up and pushing in right now. He's trying to push in, but Araki Hoshi doesn't get the target that they needed. But I think on it, they're gonna actually get away already. They already got what they needed, but damage comes through from Sushin. Double kill taking down Kirk as well as the side of Brusco. Now that's what is needed coming in for the side of RQ. but at the same time, this is gonna be tough for the side of Team Fnatic on it as at least Araki Hoshi gets the trade that they needed. That is exactly what RQ Hoshi is looking for and actually a massive win because up until now I have been mentioning that Fnatic Onyx should be stronger at this stage of the game. They just have more presence and damage overall but extended the team fight a little bit too far and RQ beautifully managed their resources and positioning 
playing around the healing being provided by the Revitalize so that they could prolong the fight and then re-enter once Onyx had overextended in the mid lane. Because of that, Sutsujin now has a little bit of an EXP lead against King Kong, and RQ has even up the net worth difference. As long as they keep the gold even and Skylar does not die, this game is going in their favor. Agree, definitely. And a little bit stronger coming in from the side of Darren. This is where no matter how much you try to put out a potential to fight off with Kurt, it's still not enough. And going into the side of Susu Jin, I, I agree on the note that now he's actually in a very good advantage. Hopefully, Ara Kyoshi can be potentially to cover and control the movement that they are required right now to move in into the mid game. And so far right now, we do see that team Fnatic Onyx is going to actually try to team up right at the top. Going to actually try to give a lot of pressure to Skylar as well as Ida, but it will be denied instantly. Team Arakiyoshi, really good grounding, really good coverage right now for both teams. It's really tie up for both of the teams right now. Yeah, like we mentioned, Gold Lane going to get a lot of attention to it because if Onyx can unlock Kelra and have him start gaining gold from assists, it accelerates their snowball so much further while stopping Skylar. But RQ not letting that happen. Oh, they're not letting it happen as well. They're contesting for the turtle as well. Darren coming in for the push of Bruce Cole. Susan takes down and gets the turtle instead. But at the moment right now, they will be trying to go in for the scrimmage. Not done yet. Going in for the push to the side of Rins. Rins had to pull away with Susan having so much damage to put out. They had to reposition, but it's a good move. Skylar almost been tagged up. Now Darren coming in for the backline. Dead matter to take down. This is Zaman Force coming through and Rin takes down Kilra immediately. Now pushing on straight. Darren doesn't have it much damage and they had to pull away. A really good win, but super frisk comes along with the trade and King Kong shuts down Su Su Jin immediately with what cause they have even though getting oh. the turtle is a two trades coming in from the side of Fnatic on it but Jiren he seems like Kurt trying to get as much as kill as possible he wants to go in for the push but still it was a good cause they still managed to push away without any casualty but the trade is still the same for Fnatic on it as well as Philippine. Yeah, that trade initially looked incredible for RQ Hoshi. Again, beautifully managing their positioning. But this time it was them who prolonged the fight a little bit too far and underestimated the DPS. Oh, coming in for a fight as a moment right now, we do see Kato Kacha coming in. But at the same time, it's not going to pull anything with that Avatar Guardian. Team Fnatic Onyx will be able to pull away for those fights, even despite the fact that RQ Hoshi was not being pulled in. But at the same time, RQ Hoshi, great grip position, great response wise. So far, they know how to actually have a really good space between Fnatic Onyx, and that's what is needed. Even on the ground wise, they did manage to actually trade off between the two tourists from the top as well as mid lane. Here on out, Team RQ Hoshi, at least on the cover ground of the map, is still in their hands. Even though Onyx was able to get some good kills in that previous fight, remember the win condition we mentioned. As long as RQ Hoshi keeps the gold somewhat even until the late game, they are actually in the lead. And the gold difference right now, very, very small. Only about 1,000 in favor of Fnatic Onyx Philippines. In comparison, RQ will scale way better and they're gonna play for that timing. Oh, they're gonna pay from starting Avatar Guardian coming in for the push. At the moment right now, King Kong had to pull away, but so much damage coming in. But Skala takes down Sprints immediately and Rins shuts down Brusco. Kara been stuck in the middle, will be taken out by Ido with the wings of Dragon. But King Kong trying to survive with the Spear of Alpha, trying to move away by Rins taking out Kurt. And it's gonna be Darren to push in with the last explosion, shutting him down with the sacrifice of kill. But that's needed already from the side of RQ just to take down getting the team wiped out, desirable in RQ Hoshi hands. Fanatic Onyx went for a slightly over-aggressive position around the Lord Pit. At this stage of the game, it's understandable. They still have control, they still have damage, but RRQ, I've been seeing their micro movements, and it has been very, very impressive the way that they're dodging Avatar the Guardian every single time, making use of iframes, and Edoc as well, finding Super Friends in the back line and kicking him into the Blazing Duet, thereby funneling the entirety of Fnatic Onyx into a small area where Skylar can do the most damage. He also now has the most gold in the game. RQ, with a 2k net worth lead now at 10 minutes, are very poised to take this game if Onyx are not able to find an equalizer. Now let's see, they're gonna go in straight to the bottom side. Doesn't spot anyone. It seems that Edo trying to find a way 
to actually go into the back line first of all. But at the same time, will be denied by Super Friends, not allowing any extension coming in from the ROQ Hoshi. Lords is marching in. King Kong right at the front side. It seems that Darren will be at the back line. Doesn't spot anyone just yet, but they don't know who they want to go in. Rins overlooking straight, try to pull away, but Skylar takes down the turret immediately. But they deny it. They're ab actually having a little bit of hesitant. Try to pull in into the Fnatic on it. And this is the reason why Fnatic on it having a really good defense why so far. And Team Arakyoshi, they couldn't find the opening they needed. So at least on the side of Fnatic on it, they still be able to neutralize all the Lords and the Wave that come in their way. But they're not able to neutralize the gold advantage. RQ is now controlling the entirety of the map. And they have successfully taken every exterior tower from the side of Fnatic Onyx, leaving only the inhibitors behind. While Onyx is pretty strong as a five-man death bow, RQ Hoshi's lineup is designed quite well to be able to split up the map and even play for pickoffs. So they're going to continue doing so and see if they can bait out individual members of Fnatic Onyx. And if they're able to continue doing that, it's going to be quite difficult for our Filipino champions. Let's see, let's see. King Kong trying to find a way to break to RRQ. So far, Bruce Coach just waiting for the right time. The fact that RRQ, I like the positioning wise. They're denying every Avatar Guidance been put out by Bruce Coach. And that's the reason why it's not in the favor of Fnatic on it every time they go into team fights. So that's the motion where we're seeing RRQ Oshi positioning wise is very important for their keys. Now, Kiara. Trying to actually bait out RLQ, trying to actually pull them in. And the great, the best, the best part about it is that team. Arakyoshi, they don't need to worry about anything. They're literally prioritizing on the lane side. As long as they allow those waves come in and keep giving pressure to Fnatic Onyx, it's still going to be in their favor. Now, it's a very interesting picture to see here because you typically expect PH teams to always be superior in terms of macro. But because of the draft matchup for this game in particular, RQ Hoshi are taking care of that incredibly well since all of their heroes are either durable on their own or have built in escape mechanisms so that they are able to split push ways without needing to worry too much about getting ganked. Not to mention that Kirk is the only really reliable form of CC that Fnatic Onyx has. He has to find Skylar and that is after baiting out a Purify. Otherwise, RQ Hoshi just has so many ways of controlling team fights. Oh, going in straight for the ways of Dragon, taking down Kick on so much damage put out. Spear of Alpha pushing in, try to give as much pressure, but it's not gonna do anything as they push into Brusco instead. Getting double kill from the Rise of Rings, but at the same time, Rings is a little bit over extension, had to be shut down by Kara with the Zaman Force. But at the same time, right here, we do see Susajin gonna go in for all the burst that is required, but it's not gonna be enough. That trade's coming in 2 to 1, and they're gonna push it all out to the side of Kurt as well as going into Kara, immediately shutting him down and going in with a power of wilderness, a little bit over extension to the side of Durant, but Kurt still survive it out. Prince takes down E dot immediately. This Lord is smashing in. A really good overextension has given that advantage to the side of Fnatic Awning. But at the same time, Susujin overlooking to the side of Prince. But here on now, Kurt picks him up immediately and Susujin had to back away, having so much damage. And in the end, the Lord, a little bit those overextension is giving those potential to Fnatic Awning to reverse this back, the effect into Araki Hoshi. I really like the decision that was made by RQ to just rush in and try to take out the remaining members so that they could end the game with the Lord. Unfortunately, they went a little bit too far and yeah. Kirk was luckily able to survive with a tiny bit of HP because if the Eater had gone down, RQ would have definitely ended the game right there and then. With that though, that does give Onyx a little bit more breathing room, but they only have one inhibitor on very low HP to hold on to. Whatever happens, this next Lord must go into their hands, or RQ should be able to quite easily whittle down the crystal. Right, 81 seconds to go for the Lord. Is it that they will try to actually push those team fights or will they actually try to go in for the team fights along that Lord lane? But here on out, Edog 
is just trying to overlook. He will try to find a way to actually pick it up. Rinse, a little bit over extension, will be denied by Super Friends. And not only that, they're pushing in straight away, getting, giving a lot of damage. They're going to actually push on for that last turret immediately, but not going to be doing any lot of favor. But just need one more push, will be denied instantly by Fnatic. Just one more hit, could have actually got that turret. But in the end, Fnatic still giving a lot of pressure, not allowing Arakiyoshi to even come in. Yeah, Skylar tried to go in with the VMI for one last hit on the tower, but we have to remember in the patch, they updated the tower so that they are just super yep. tanky if you don't mm -hmm. have minions nearby. In the past, a single hit would have actually taken that down, but that's no longer viable. Regardless though, I think RQ are in a very, very comfortable position. Right now, Skylar is going to be doing a lot of damage, and because there isn't enough ways for Fnatic Onyx to force out his Purify, he can actually position himself very aggressively without needing to be worried about being CC chained. He has zero deaths so far, and the Lord is coming up. Fnatic Onyx need this, or they need to at least slow it down. With only one tower standing, if RQ pushes in with this and a Claude, the game is basically over. It is coming in right now. We do see King Kong trying to push into Durin, but at the same time, a little bit over extension coming to Edo with the Wings of Dragon. Didn't pick up anyone, but Skyler will be able to take down Kurt first of all and getting double kill to the side of Brusco. Susujin take down Killer immediately, and King Kong, the over extension that was done by the side of Fnatic Onyx, will be punished from Arakiyoshi. And unfortunately, they will go in straight into the grounds of this site. Despite the fact Durin had to be sacrificed, but it's already a done deal for the side of Team Arakiyoshi. They will be able to get this first game in the hands of Indonesia. An unexpected result, but one that we 